each country and nation has unique differences that we need to accept. That's right. So putting the values at the center of our lives will guide the interactions and celebrating those differences respectfully. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here we are entering the first session of World Values Forum, Values at the Center. We are happy to welcome our distinguished speakers who are here with us in Bali. His Excellency, Vice Minister Kartika Wiryatmojo, SAMBA, welcome Pa. The second Vice Minister in the Ministry of State-Owned Enterprises, Indonesia. And Ibu Dimah Alshik, the V20 founder and also Director Community Engagement, Global Affairs and Research at the Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Misk Foundation, Saudi Arabia. Yes. We also would like to welcome our speakers that is joining us online from all over the world. Good day from Bali for... Bapak Sukiri Mulyadi, PhD, the expert committee BPIP, Pancasila Ideology Development Agency Indonesia, along with... Bapak Anggoro Eko Cahyo, the president director of BPJS Ketenaga Kerjaan, or Labor Insurance and Social Security of Indonesia. Bapak Syif Vikram Kemka, the V20 co-founder, executive chairman of the Global Education and Leadership Foundation, India. And also, Bapak Rudolf Lohmeyer, V20 co-founder and partner at Kearney, United Arab Emirates. The World Values Forum will be facilitated by Ibu Dr. Mandip Rai, the V20 co-founder and author of the Values Compass, 2021 Thinkers 50, United Kingdom, who flew all the way from UK to be with us today. And Dr. Mandi Prai is the V20 co-founder and the author of The Values Compass, What 101 Countries Teach Us About Purpose, Life, and Leadership. She was among the top 2021 top thinker to watch Thinkers 50 and was also shortlisted in the 2021 The Business Book Awards Diversity, Inclusion and Equality category. She's a global authority on values, working with companies, institutions and individuals around the world. She has traveled around the world and reported as a journalist for the BBC World Service and Reuters, amongst others. So, without further ado, please welcome our distinguished speakers and facilitator of the World Values Forum. Hello. The stage is yours. Thank you. We've learned that Kenan means in the center of the heart. And Marissa, you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Global World Values Day. There couldn't be a better day to celebrate values. And there couldn't be a better stage to have Vice Minister with us. Now, I'm just going to, we've had an introduction of um, Ibu Dima. Ibu means madam. So I'm just going to use the Indonesian phrases of Ibu Dima and Bapatiko. Is that okay? And since we have moved the schedule forward a little bit, because Bapatiko found values to be so important that although there is so much else happening at the moment and his schedule is super packed, he's come here especially to highlight values. So for the moment, dear virtual speakers, I'm so glad that you're coming in from around the world at odd hours. If you just give us a short period, we're going to concentrate with the minister because then they're going to shoot off and um, they have a plane to catch. So in this little short window, please allow us to concentrate on Bapatiko. So I know that you have a, quite an incredible background in the sense that uh, you have brought in the private sector and the state sector together. And you created a very incredible acronym for values, which you hope will spread throughout Indonesia. Could you please share with us what is this acronym? Thank you. Uh, 
Very good morning all of you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, Homo Swastiastu. Uh, it's very uh, happy morning for me to be here in Green School, a very magnificent place, and to be with you to share about how Indonesia transform its nation and also transform at the center its values. I think uh, all of us here, including the one online, believe that to transform a nation, you need to start from the core, which is transforming the values and the purpose of the people. Some of you may actually think why I'm as a vice minister of state enterprise actually interested in actually talking about values. I want to check. Can everyone hear him? Can you at the back really hear the minister? Yes. Put your hands up if right at the back. Ah, could you please speak a bit oh, closer okay. to sure, the microphone? Sure. Maybe closer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So why I, me as a vice minister of state enterprise feel that V20 and values is very important, not only for Indonesia, but for the world, and how actually to lead by values and purpose. Indonesia has gone through a big transformation since our uh, independence in 1945 and several period of different political uh, setup. And now I think Indonesia come to a stage where we have to move as a country towards a middle income or even upper middle income country. And we are actually a collection of people with different ethnicity, different religious, and different historical background. So actually, when our forefathers trying to form what is Indonesia, it's actually a big challenge. Because we are so diverse, we have so many ethnicities, we have so many different languages. So that's why, after careful consideration at the time, President Soekarno, as our forefather, actually described Pancasila as our you know, major country values. But now, modernization, digitalization, liberalization come. There is a lot of changes in innovation, corporatization, liberalization in social media, and so on and so forth. So we have to redefine what is suitable for the future of Indonesia and how the young generation, the next generation, adopt our values and still able to transform and modernize the country forward. That's actually a big challenge because there's a big disconnection between the past, now, and the future. I think that happened also in other countries as well. And Indonesia is still awkwardly balanced between social, you know, driven country and capitalist, and capitalist country, for example. And whether we are moving towards more liberal country or more religious country. Are we different towards more democratic country or more central-led country? So there is still a lot of debate and consideration inside our country how to actually describe and drive our country moving forward as a modern country. And President Jokowi, when he came to power in 2014, mentioned about a mental revolution, how Indonesia have to have revolution mental. So not only just building infrastructure, building market mechanism, building knowledge and also innovation and digitalization, but also at the center how to transform the values and culture of the people. And it's a big challenge. So we in the state of enterprise try to understand how we can be partly and probably even at the center to actually become a model. Because we in Indonesia actually consisted of around 40 to 50 percent of our economy. So state of enterprise in Indonesia is actually very big. It's actually 40 to 50 percent of our economy and we have I'm going to pause for a second. He speaks so fast, right? So one, I'm going to have you go slower. slower okay. And two, but what you're saying is so profound yeah. because you're talking about the Banj Silla, yeah. which are the five values that Indonesia create. It is like fundamental to every faith, every humanity. So it's humanity, it's unity, one God, please, yeah. democracy and justice. This is the Banj Silla yeah. that you're speaking of. And this is what you hope will spread throughout all these organizations. And then on top of that, you have this Arabic word, which means, uh, say the word, say the word. Akhlaq. Yeah. Akhla. Now this word literally means good manners, essentially. Yeah. Is good that manners, fair? Yes. And so this is what you hope will be across all the institutions and across Indonesia. Yeah. And then like you've created a presentation to share yeah. with us. Yes. Do you want to share it yeah. with us? Yes. Okay, but slower. 
<laughs> because you're saying so much good stuff that we're not catching it. Okay. So we try to understand what is the challenge in our organization, in our people, in our leadership, and how to create something at the center that become a sustainable behavior pattern right. that people will adhere to. And I will give you a bit of a background of how Indonesian education there, yeah, because I talk a lot about Indonesian education with Yuri, for example. That you mean since you became independent in 1945, yes, yes. you created this? Yes. So in Indonesia, we don't have actually ethics in our classes. We don't have ethics, ethics in the in classes, classes, which is not just unique yeah. to Indonesia. Across the world, yeah. we so, are lacking yeah. So this. in the past, during the Suharto period, we were taught about Pancasila. So Pancasila, Pancasila. is actually a mandatory lesson when you go from uh, elementary school to junior high school, go to high school and to university, then you have to go to this three months or one month process of, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, inherent you know, uh, development of understanding of Pancasila. Yes, because these are the values that you're bringing in through yes. the education system, yes. even though you don't yes. have yes. ethics. And, and at that time, we were taught to have case studies on you know, moral dilemmas, social dilemmas, when you are faced with choices that have, you know, probably lesser of two evils, which one you choose, why you choose that, you know. But then, unfortunately, yeah. No, I'm just thinking, these are the case studies we need at Harvard Business School and all, the, all schools around the world. This is excellent. But then, after the uh, changes in uh, Indonesian politics in 98, actually, we don't actually get that things anymore. So, we try to inherently build that into the curriculum of, a, of a education in Indonesia, Across but, all state schools? Yeah, but, but then, I think we are moving towards more religion teaching rather than social and ethical teaching. Which is good in a way that there is a relationship between Indonesian people with God. But it doesn't actually teach much about how we relate with others. Not only in social context, but even more profound and more difficult in a social context, in a corporation context, in an organization context when you have a lot of moral dilemma, a lot of business judgment, a lot of social judgment that you have to choose between two, three options. Give us an example. Yeah. So, for example, Indonesia right now, there's a big, so let, let's take a big topic, for example, yeah? Because it's a very profound topic now. It's about the new capital, for example. Yes, but this is what we were so new keen to talk system. about. So wait, if you don't know, this is breaking news potentially, yeah. that Indonesia is shifting its capital yeah. from Jakarta to Kalimantra, which is an island that, you know, yes. unique then will it's become the political jungle island. island. Jungle island. A jungle island. And the city will call Rimba Nusa. It's a basically island city. Uh, uh, jungle city. So you are going to move there and all ministers from around... Theoretically, yes. Theoretically. Uh, the why theoretically? <laughs> because it's just started. Okay. Just started. Can we make this into a values-based city? Yeah. Can yeah. we design it with be, those be, values? Before that, let, okay. me, let me give Tell you a us. bit of a big discussion now. Because... There's a lot of people that also opposing the idea because of economical reason, because oh, there's a lot of challenges in terms of poverty, in terms of uh, price increase right now with the energy and you know, food shortage in the world. Why would we actually focus on building new capital? But then there's another argument saying that our capital city in Jakarta is actually environmentally is already very damaged and depleting quality because a lot of problem with, you know, the city is sinking, it's overcrowded. We have actually 14 million people in the, in the afternoon, eh, sorry, in, in the evening, and around 25 million people in the afternoon. 40 million people in Jakarta. This city That's is right. sinking in terms sinking. of pollution and pollution, the problems that they you know, have. All problems, social yeah. problems, congestion. You know, environmental congestion. Yeah. It's a very expensive social cost and also co corporate cost as well because, yes. you know, the spend, you know, actually the, the gasoline that you burn every day for people to just move around the city is expensive. Yes. So there's a big environmental benefit of actually moving there. Yes. But then there's a big debate right, whether this is a priority or not. So those kind of thing. What do you think? I think we have to balance eventually, right? I think in the long run, for me, it's a must. Because Jakarta is not sustainable. Socially, environmentally, it's not sustainable. So th there's no question that we need to move. Even almost all presidents be before President Jokowi already think about it. So by next year, is it true yeah. that by 2023, yeah. Indonesia will have this new capital? 
we start to build. Now. Okay. So, so actually, instead of enterprise, it's actually at the center also to actually becoming people who are setting the infrastructure and so on and so forth. Okay. But the challenge is always to hit the balance, right? Yes. How to maximize or optimize resources. So how actually we achieve the long-term vision? Well, we're actually managing the current resources so that we still have money to actually reduce poverty, to actually have money to reinvest in education, to actually start to move to a green energy. So country always have problem when they have to divide resources, right? And the problem with that, every time you have to have moral and you know uh, judgment on what is more important. And you know, I'm involved in many, many occasions to actually dis discuss about these challenges. You know. And now with the liberal democratic, you know, liberal in Indonesia, because Indonesia now is, is actually very liberal democratic. It's something which has never happened before. We have so many parties. We have very liberal and very strong uh, parliament. And it's a new thing also. How do we, how do we make decision as a, as a country? How do we actually uh, engage people in the, in the public policies? So it's a new thing. And we just have two uh, direct elections for president and for so so there's a lot of things happening in Indonesia so that's why because of this it's very important to actually renew and reinvigorate our values Pancasila is still there but how to make it grounded you give me a lot of hope yeah. because we are sitting here in the green yeah. school you're talking about values-based education you're talking about the Pancasila and then you're talking about bringing values in the front and center as we are just creating yeah. a new capital in the last few days that the world has yeah. come to Bali, Indonesia for the G20 and the V20, we've seen so many incredible initiatives that have had sustainability and values at the core. For example, I've just come from Potato Head, yeah. where the founder is also Indonesian. Yeah. And right from the get-go, they are thinking, how can we make sure that every aspect of our living yeah. is clean and green? Yeah. And they've really succeeded to do that. Yes. It's not an afterthought. It's yes. not because it's yes. fashionable. Yes. It's not because it's good. Yes. And the same with the green school. If you've been to yes. any part of it, the bathrooms, if you've had, when we are all have water tumblers, we're not going to have plastic bottles. Yes. We're not going to become a problem yes. for our world. We're going to become a solution. Yes. And with leaders like you, we can definitely do that. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. He's so humble yeah. as well. So now when we come to a value, and how to actually derive the value from Pancasila. So I show it here that at the time we have a big discussion because Pancasila is really at the top as a nation. We have a common values, but then when we- The fingers on your hand yeah, are the Pancasila. But when we come to day-to-day -day activities, because I give you a bit of background, because state enterprise actually have two objectives, value creation and Social development. Value by value, you mean economic creation? Economic, creation, economic yes. value. So, so we are a bit of a capitalist and socialist at the same time because yes. you know we provide electricity to people, we provide gasoline to people, we provide digital connection through our signal. We have banks. I actually now leading as a chairman, Bank Rakyat Indonesia, who are actually creating profitability but also distributing subsidized loan to 30 million people of Indonesia. Uh, yes. So, Yes. So it's very interesting that, that we are actually trying to mix between the you know, corporate and economic value creation and social justice. And so what you're time. talking about, a value creation and values yes. creation. Yes. yes. And after looking into this many, many years, I believe that there is always a center that we can achieve, even though it's very difficult to achieve that center. Because we, we, we tend to always choose between A and B, C and D, but there's always something at the center that we could a compromise. Co compromise. So that's why we try to make this as a you know, general uh, guidance, because we, we are operating in many different sectors, right? from banking, oil and gas, mineral, insurance. So that's why the first one is integrity. And it, we use it, Arabic word amana. So integrity, and the word is? Amana. 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 So amana is, is actually the Arabic world, uh, and it's very profound in, in Muslim uh, community, yeah, Amanah, because... It's central. Amanah, meaning that you are accountable yes. for everything you do or everything you say. Yes. And it's very, very high-valued, Amanah. But it's very difficult, actually, to be honest. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because you have to align between your heart and your, your, your doing. Yeah. 
because sometimes you do something good, but at, at heart you, you think about something else, right? That's so, pure honesty, yeah. right? To yeah. even tell you that integrity is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So to build amana from inside out is actually a big challenge. Yes. And as I mentioned earlier, the religion teaching actually doesn't go beyond the religion, but when we talk about business ethics, you know, business judgment, social judgment, when you have to choose between lesser of the two evils, it's a lot of moral dilemmas. Do you think it's because you're young, because you got into this position when you were 47, you're now 50 something. <laughs> Have you found that since the pandemic, yeah. it's easier to persuade and enroll everyone yeah. into this values conversation? Yeah. Is it easier now? I think... Uh, Especially within the government? Indonesia is somewhat open to, to more, how do you call it, yeah? uh, softer discussion. But it's a bit of a contradictory that in the past 20 years we're trying to corporatize Indonesian. So we try to put, you know, management system, we try to put performance uh, measures, you know, incentive system, reward system, standard operating procedures, risk management guidelines. So sometimes we are becoming too modern and too corporates, but then we sort of like resort back that there is something missing also at the, at the core. So we shouldn't just rely on systems, you know, uh, management systems, standard operating procedures, you know, corporate plan. So we, now we are sort of like turning back to see that this has to go both, you know, the, the corporatization, modernization, but still retaining the value at the core. It's almost like GDP and what we're creating maybe is a GVP, I don't yeah. know, right? Something that has, a, has both, a blend yeah. of both. Because, because sometimes system also cannot reach certain area. That is really personal judgment. So this is because I was working as a banker for 25 years. Yes, so and as, also as a consultant, I yeah, think. Yes, as a consultant. So, yes. so as a banker, you found a lot of moral dilemma also, right? When yes. you provide, whether you actually focusing on how to get the maximum value for your corporate. Yes. Or actually giving some to the people and give them more room to actually So what's grow. the one piece of advice? Because everyone faces this dilemma, yeah. right? Everyone who's working in the private sector, yeah. how can you cre increase yeah. value yeah. and yet have values? Yeah. I think eventually, I believe that when you create values for your consumer and you create values for your society, your company will flourish. I Did you, you hear to, that? You have to Did you hear that? When you create values, that's when your company and country will flourish. Yes. So, we're going to tweet that. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> so leaders in corporation need to change the way of their thinking and actually go back to the... Because eventually when, when a company focusing on the value that they create to the consumer, to the society and to their employee, then the company will be sustainable. Yes. You can create a short-term economic value. Yes. Massively in the short run, but if your consumer, your employer, your society is not happy, then after five years, three years, then your company will, will fail. I'm so glad you're in yeah. the state sector. I'm yeah. so glad you're helping the government with this. So, it, is there something that happened in your own life that made you think, I'm going to shift and contribute? Yeah. I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, because when you try to transform, so when, when I was a CEO as well, when we try to transform the company, sometimes when you are still a junior or you are still a middle manager, you don't understand what are you transforming? Are you transforming the product, the system, the IT, the digital? But eventually when you are becoming a more senior leader, what you're transforming is people. So you're actually transforming the way people think and yes. the way people make decisions. Yes. And you can create all sort of systems, but eventually it's the human that actually make decisions. And you cannot control the human mind, right? And I have to delegate my job to thousands of people. How can I delegate my judgment to, to, yes. to thousands of people when their values is not the same with my values? So I've yeah. just been told that you have, when is your hard stop? When do, when do you have to catch this flight? Oh, yes. oh, no, it's okay. I still have another one hour. You have a one hour? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're here for the whole discussion. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Do you mind then I bring everyone else in? Because I feel as though the other panelists have had these dilemmas. So, Ibu Dima, <laughs> if I may. I know that you also have had this wonderful journey of private, state, civil society, and both in, well, may I just pause a second and say that Dima has really, on the global level, been created and been at the beginning of this V20 journey. 
literally a lot of us would not have confounded and configured had it not been for Ibu Dima. And yes, thank you. So I'm just going to ask, take us from the beginning, because what we're seeing here is the practice. Can you share with us how did it all begin? Um, thank you, thank you, uh, and it's, uh, it's the team also. effort, uh, uh, Mandeep. I'm grateful for your uh, for this recognition. That is uh, 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 need to go to the full team of uh, V20, especially the founding circle. I'm going to have you uh, speak into the mic. For okay. some reason, we're having to hold the mics very close. Okay, so um, we we are uh, going through uh, a huge national transformation within my nation in Saudi Arabia. Uh, for the past uh, six to seven years. Uh, this uh, national transformation have led us to a very successful um, uh, social uh, dynamics and social interventions that led uh, to a better uh, acceptance uh, for change and access uh, toward economical change, uh, economical uh, shifts, uh, and also social change and social shifts. Uh, those uh, great, uh, great initiatives that took place uh, on, on my nation uh, was well recognized by global uh, thought leaders uh, around the globe. Uh, we have been uh, participating in many global events where uh, those changes were presented and we have seeking uh, advice and uh, um, adv advice and consultation uh, regarding how to reinvent this or redo this or uh, doing this maybe in more efficient way or a faster even faster way because the changes that has happened on a national level is 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 a huge and specifically targeting youth uh, uh, having this exposure with thought leaders such as uh, uh, Mr. Shev uh, uh, with the Global Entrepreneurship uh, Prizes or uh, with you at WEF, uh, Mandeep, and uh, our, uh, our awareness towards uh, Values Compass uh, book and case studies uh, and with, uh, with uh, the initiative that goes also across, uh, uh, across the Middle East and, and, and Europe and America, specifically that that is around values-based education and uh, have um have make not only as uh, uh, as uh, Ibu Tuki here uh, describe acceptance within a specific um, entity or organization, but created this global acceptance toward those uh, values-based movements and values-based approaches. Uh, I couldn't uh, uh, um, uh, turn away from this opportunity where we can uh, invite even more wider uh, pool of experts uh, that are willing to contribute voluntarily uh, in an engagement group led by them, uh, presenting policies and uh, best uh, uh, cases and uh, success stories on how those initiatives could be uh, um, scaled. Uh, on a national level or on a, on a regional level, how those initiatives could be enhanced by best practices that are cross-sectorial. And the, the status where uh, the world is with uh, 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 a, a very deep complexity and very deep um, continuous problems that keep, us, keep pushing us to survival mode constantly uh, made us all fed up. <laughs> and need to create interventions that uh, uh, reach to the policy making on a top down approach but grassrooted and informed by the practitioners from the field uh, the the school principals the school teachers the um, uh, the cultural admins the hr uh, people in, in companies the enterprises the best approaches that happen on on a micro level uh, need to brought up uh, in a in a common platform where uh, engagement is structured toward having evident based policy making uh, that is cross uh, cross cultural that would raise above the um, uh, the narratives around the beliefs that might take us apart from each other but common on the values of those beliefs and the values here represent human needs uh, those human needs are cross cultural 
uh, uh, are uh, very international, uh, internationally recognized. Even if we use different terminology, it consists of the same behaviors. So when we uh, present not just the word, but the policy, the action that goes with it, and the description of the behaviors that ex expected and associated with it, and present it as a national, multicultural policy, uh, it would have uh, a more profound impact uh, and more profound acceptance by different community leaders, whether they are from the private sector, public sector, or civil society. So we are proud that the V20 community is growing, and growing not only by people in the academia or people who are part of specific domain or specific sector or specific uh, religious background, but rather practitioners from the field who have created change themselves and willing to see this change taking a more uh, uh, higher impact. You can see her passion and you can see how she has enrolled, thank you, how she has enrolled literally practitioners from around the world, including us, to volunteer our time in addition to whatever else we might be doing. We've all become values champions. I've been working on this work for, you know, all my life, but when Dima declared this vision of essentially creating a global infrastructure on every single level, like you said, from schools, the youth, to our institutions, the state institutions, but also civil society institutions, MISC, the foundations, NGOs, and then to see this within governments, like literally as the G20 goes from country to country, Italy last year, Indonesia this year, India next year, coincidence that they're all eyes, and you can see there's an eye on the pursuit of making sure that values is at the front and center of all this policy making. So really, thank you for getting us all involved. I think we were all, um, uh, Bapa Shiv, Bapa Rudolf, Bapa Sudiki, we were all working on values, but in silos, and to bring it all together has created a real feat. So I'm going to do a little weaving between Indonesia Global, Indonesia Global. So with that, I'm going to go to Bapa Sudiki next, who speaks about who's, all of his life study. I've now been to 186 countries. A lot of this you'll find in the values compass. But Bapa Sudiki looks at exactly that humanity that you find in each and every place. Actually, human needs, human desires, as you said, are extremely similar. Beliefs divide, but values unite. So, Bapa Sudiki, could you share with us how you see Panchilla really operating? How can it really become the fabric of our society across the world? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Can we hear him? Work. Can we hear him? We're going to make sure we can hear you first. Yeah. Thank Speak you for, for us. Your wonderful introduction. Great. Yes, you're welcome. Please share. These things, a speaker and guest, uh, especially my dear friend, Alisa Wahid. Today, I'm going to share with you some of my thoughts on Pancasila. Uh, first, as the ideology of tolerance and equality. And second, as the core spirit of compassion and humanity. Speaking about Pancasila, and it is actually the common values, the fundamental values of our society and also our nation. So I'm going to share with you why I thought Pancasila is the ideology of tolerance and equality. It brings back our memory to uh, June 1st, 1945, when our first president Sukarno and founding fathers who actually give the speech about the birth of Pancasila. In his speech, he actually prepared what this nation looks like in the future. So he established the nature of the state itself. And he told to member of the investigating body of the preparation for independence 
that the state we're going to establish is the state of Gotong Royong. This is state that is not intended for one person or for one family. It is a state that is intended for all people. And the basic values, the basic principle that guide this state is exactly the state of mutual cooperation. In Bahasa, we call Negara Gotong Royong. Gotong Royong, there's this principle. Uh, how do I say it properly? Yeah. Gotong Royong. So this principle, it's uh, it, if I had to define Indonesia into one value, I would say it's Gotong Royong. That's what I did in the Values Compass. And the reason for that, it's, it's, it's almost the tagline of the G20. As you come into the country right now, you see this tagline of stronger together, better together, that essentially if we cooperate, absolutely anything is possible. So to your point, that although we might have these values or think of this as individuals, if not, we're not doing this in unison, it doesn't work. Is that correct? Is that, is that, Bapa uh, Sudiki, is that what you, uh, yeah, sure. yes? So that is the first major point that I'm uh, going to say. And the second important point is that because we just established the state of mutual cooperation, Negara Gautam Royong, then we have to have the ideology that unite people from different background, a different tradition, a different religious belief, and different ethnicity. What is the best ideology? Ideology that actually center on the common value, common ground. So people can share, can embrace this value as our values. So this is not only the values of one person or one citizen, this is common values. So this is why uh, the second major point that I'm going to say as the basis of the new state, the new ideology, the world view of this nation. So Pancasila has become the basis of the state, the basis of the state ideology. So what is the actually important about this, uh, this value, this ideology? It's actually, first of all, given the fact that the tradition that we have in Indonesia is tradition of religious diversity, so we have unity and diversity, just like in America, it has a uh, pluribus unum from many one out of many one so we have actually something similar although it has a different meaning but it has the same spirit that we come from many people many uh, background but we are united you are united and the Pancasila here is the uniting factor uniting principle uniting agency uniting ideology for all people of different religion, different religion, and different religious belief. So, one of the main function of the Pancasila as the ideology of tolerance is actually because Pancasila actually taught us and preach us to every citizen the essential value of tolerance and equality at the center of public life, at the center of public values. Now, what's amazing is this word Panchasila is Panch, five. It comes from Sanskrit, Panchasila. So, you know, we talk about trying to create a world in which we have, we do think about the economy, we do think about GDP, we do think about the thriving of all of us, but yet we have these traditional values. And thank goodness for scholars like yourself, Papa, who have studied this their whole lives to think how can we have this unity present. So before, the, as the V20 opened, you saw the blessing that took place. That, and before Dima and I got on stage, you were already on stage, we both prayed in our own, to our own 
faith, and yet Panchasila is about the one God. It doesn't matter whether there's a Hindu blessing, or whether it's a Muslim prayer, or whether it's a Sikh prayer, or whether it's a Christian prayer. You're all praying to this one universal energy, and you're all hoping that actually this humanity that Bapa is speaking about and, and is I present think, across all. Sorry, yeah. you wanted to say something, Bapa. Yeah, I think what just you told us actually is that that is my third point. Uh, my third point is very important because Pancasila, the first principle is a belief in one God, a belief in divinity. What is it exactly? How can you share this first principle to people of different religious tradition, a different background, a different ethnicity, so they can have the same values? So according to Sukarno, according to Sukarno, by saying ketuhanan yang maha esa, a belief in one God, this is actually the platform for religious liberty. The platform of religious liberty. And according to Sukarno, according to Sukarno, not only should Indonesian people believe in God, but every citizen has the right to believe his and her own God. So according to Sukarno again, a Muslim can believe in monotheism, in one God. Christians should worship God according to the teaching of Jesus. Muslim can believe God according to the teaching of Muhammad. And also, and also very important because we actually have a convent in Bali, Sukarno also say, that 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 Hindus, Balinese people also can yes and to your point the about the unity exactly. that despite the exactly. to bring the unity in with the diversity thank you yeah. very 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 much i wanted sure. to thank you i wanted to zoom out for a moment because what panchasila and what papa is talking about is very individual and yet united now, if we zoom out into geopolitics, Bapa Shiv, who is looking a little, I don't know where in the world he's zooming in from. He's originally Indian, but you find him literally all over the planet. So at some, there's some early hour, I think, wherever he is. He will speak about, I mean, you will tell us, Bapa Shiv, that the global political dialogue right now is such that values couldn't be more important. Could you share with us your perspective? Papa Namaste. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, I'm in Italy at uh, uh, 5.50 in the morning. We're delighted to be with all of you. Um, I, first of all, congratulate the organizers and everyone of this. And uh, it's wonderful to see Dima and uh, Mandeep, you, Rudolf, and Dr. Ghazi, and everyone there. I wish I could be with you in beautiful Bali right now. And I apologize, I'm not with you. Uh, and congratulations to the Indonesian government on everything they are doing uh, to support the G20 and most importantly also to support the values, uh, 20 dialogues and discussions. Um, we all see the world situation as it is. Uh, someone said to me, where are the adults? Uh, it seems the whole world is being run by adolescent uh, leaders, unfortunately. And we see so many problems uh, of food security uh, issues, energy price rises, uh, you know, refugee crisis, the climate crisis, etc. And you would think that with the tremendous blessings of technology and education and learning and logistics and all the things we've developed over the last two, three hundred years, that we would have come to a better place on the planet. And I think the core is the values. I think the methodology of creating wealth on the planet, which has led many people away from poverty to uh, a better life, uh, which has helped many, many people, at the same time has not had a binding values framework. And therefore, I think the values of Panchila, the values of us, you know, having mutual respect and regard for human life, for people on the planet, for all uh, diverse peoples and countries and regions and religions. I think that uh, united thinking has been missing. And as we think in silos 
about our country, our religion, our population, our people, uh, which is important. I think without the context of a global connected world, I think uh, we have created many issues for ourselves. And I think it begins with our education at schools. I think young children should be taught that values is the foundation upon which everything else is built. And those values are really human values. They transcend everything else. And I think if we aren't able to do that, uh, we will continue to have the type of issues and problems we do. I remember when I was at school in England, a poem I was taught was John Donne's No Man is an Island. And we look at uh, Indonesia, the country of the most islands in the world, the biggest archipelago in the world, and uh, look at what Indonesia has done, brought all those islands together. And so I will quote that poem because I thought I should dig it up from my ancient memory. And it says, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. And then it skips to, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never sent to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. So I think that attitude of being connected and always being uh, empathetic about others, I think is the core fundamental value. But if we have that, I think we will immediately start to build a better world, whether it's in education, whether it's in political leadership, whether it's in business, whether it's in uh, social issues, uh, you know, equality and uh, you know, lack of inequity and so on and so forth. So now, I just want to say congratulations again on the tremendous work that V20 is doing and I'm humbled and very proud to be part of it in a small way. He's saying congratulations, but he's actually going to take on a very big load because as of tomorrow, as soon as this ends, the baton is passed over to him and his team and there's a lot of his team here and his representatives are here. Uh, as <laughs> So as, you're, as we move over to India, what could we expect? I know that practically we are looking at, well, you've spent your life working on the three E's, the environment, the economy, and the education, and bringing values together in those three principal domains. If we were to take all of this room, all of social media, everyone who's watching from around the world, if we're taking them all with us now from a journey from Indonesia, as you said, the biggest archipelago, no man is, a, is an island, very well put. And we jump over to India. What can we, how are we going to build upon this, Bapa Shiv? Can you share? Thank you for your kind words, Mandeep. Yes, we're excited to bring uh, Values 20 and G20 to India next year. It's a big honor for India and for us. Uh, we're very excited about that. We think India. Uh, offers something to the planet because India was the original melting pot. Uh, everyone talks about the US as a melting pot, but the Indian melting pot started 2000 years ago. And, uh, you know, all religions, uh, all uh, different cultures, all languages, uh, India has, uh, you know, the, the Sanskrit heritage uh, and the sort of Vedantic heritage, uh, which was really about self-knowledge and uh, you know, you can't be a values-oriented society if you're not a values, if it's not built upon values-oriented people, values-oriented individuals. And hence, hence, I think everything starts with self-knowledge. Everything starts with making oneself uh, a deeper and more thoughtful and compassionate, kind, caring, loving, and thoughtful human being. And with that, I think everything else will find its way. And uh, we uh, hope that you know, the uh, event in India next year will again continue to uh, shine the light uh, on this critical issue of values. Uh, for me, my dream, and I urge you all to help us do it somehow, is to make Values 20 become an official part of the G20 agenda. Because the truth is, the G20 without V20 is like a body without a heart. You need the heart at the center for G20 to work well. You need the V20 to be integrated into the G20 at a fundamental level. And it needs our Indonesian friends to really lobby hard for that so that India next year becomes the place where it's finally integrated 
into G20 in, a, in an active way. Because I think our leaders around the world need to know that the sun around which all the planets will orbit is actually values and common values, shared values, values of humanity beyond any particular religion or culture. And I think we can do it. And I think this forum uh, and uh, this community can drive that. And I think young people can drive that. And luckily, India has many, many young people. And our job will be to really push that voice, that young people's youth voice to say, we want values to be the center, the sun around which all the other planets revolve. And hopefully we will be able to do that. Indonesia has a tremendous population of young people as well. So we very much look forward to working with the young people in Indonesia to create the beginning of that voice and for that to echo in India next year and in Brazil the year after that and soon around the world more and more. So we very much uh, look forward to your support and help in doing that. Very, very well put. The point is that with a population, thank you, Baba Shiv, the population of Indonesia, one of the biggest in, in uh, Asiana is maybe 280 million and then India, maybe over a billion, 1.4 billion or something. The amount of young people, can you all, the young people, please tweet that the G20 without the V20 is like a body without a heart. That was <laughs> very well put. Um, and we do want values at the heart, as our host Kanan's uh, name suggests. It would be great if the G20, even within these two days, could really hear, see, and align themselves so that we are part of with them in India. And if we could make one commitment, I guess, as well as the self-actualization and knowing thyself better, it would also be to step forward with all the generations, all the faiths, everyone together with values at the center and at the core. Um, someone who has done this very well would be Bapa Angoro, who has been looking at this population of 280 million and has there's a commitment within Indonesia that every state-owned, in fact, every company, at least 1% should have uh, a person of either disability or you know, people who have other challenges. And so we're really talking, talking about social inclusion. And Bapa Angoro has looked at how can they make sure that 30 million people across Indonesia are indeed included. Um, Bapa Angoro, you've done this in a very practical way. Thank you so much for putting your heart, your action, your money where your mouth is and for making this a reality. And as a sponsor, could you please share with us what you've created in a very practical way, so what is real and how values have been at the center. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Mandeep. Good morning. Good morning. Selamat pagi, Pak Tiko. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm, I will uh, underline what Pak Sukiti uh, share about uh, Gotong Royong, all mutual cooperation. Because we believe the one value that helps Indonesian thrive collectively through the hard time is uh, Gotong Royong. It is the willingness to help without expecting anything in return. This value is so deeply rooted in uh, Indonesians, in heart and heart. Why? Because Gotong Royong is part of our history. During the uh, colonial period, we cooperated to gain our independence, although we come from different social cultures and backgrounds. And besides Gotong Royong, it's part of our daily life as I introduced in very early in our childhood. I recall in elementary school, I remember that there were many moments when we collected our money to support our friends who are in grief. Or in addition, Gotong Royong is very common in our neighborhood. We have uh, Kerja Bakti. Kerja Bakti is uh, on weekly or monthly basis. We are, we clean our neighborhood. That's, that's a... Uh, is it still relevant nowadays? Yes, my point of view uh, think this is still relevant. In the recent pandemic, we saw our Gotong Rayong values on how we support each other through the hard times. We bought and donated food supplies to those who need. 
we have our friends who lost their jobs and started their business and we buy their product we we, we reminded each other to wearing masks and raise the COVID awareness that's that's i think that's the one of the spend of the oil in in uh, more macro uh, economy in nationwide context Kotoro is one of the most important basics principles. I want also you to speak a little country. bit louder because what you're saying is super important and I want to make yeah. sure everyone okay. gets it. Okay. Okay. I rephrase. In more uh, macro macroeconomic social, Kotoro is uh, the most important basic principles. Also in our social security programs. Our work accident and death benefit programs apply the principle of gotong royong by sharing risk from workers who work in less risky and more help to risky fields. So the people who work in less risky support the people who work in the uh, more risky uh, fields. In more specific context, with the Stack, we also launched a campaign that adopt gotong royong values. We call campaign Sertakan. Sertakan is Sejahterakan Pekerja Sekitar Anda. It encourages wages earner to help cover workers who are near poverty line and economically vulnerable. So we hope through this program, more workers in the informal sector, especially in informal sector, will be covered in by social security. As and September 2022, Yes, yeah. Andy? No, no, I was just thinking that you were just about to go into September 2022. I was thinking that yeah. as your diversity doesn't just come from religion or background or country, it comes from yeah. every type of ability. And what we've seen even, even sitting right here right now is that there's a real celebration of sound, of music, of art, of creativity, of all different forms of diversity are being present. And I don't think that is possible without what you're talking about, which is social inclusion. And you were bringing yeah. us on to the present, to September 2022. Sorry to have interrupted you, but I just wanted to sh share with you that you, what you're doing is so, um, is so critical to really have uh, a full picture, which is what I believe the V20 has created for us. Please continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, actually, the Sertakan program is a reflection of United in Diversity. Yes. So every people can help others, uh, especially the earner workers, help the informal sector. Yes. Because currently in September 2022, the informal workers who have security uh, in social security only 4.6 million, only 12 percent compared to 92 million workers in our universe. So the issue is, of course, ability to pay is the you one saying important. Only 12 percent are included, or only 12 percent? Tell me. Only 12 percent are included. So we have a long yes. way to go. Is your point? Yes. Yes. Yes, Even the though there's 30 epic. million people you're working with. Yes, uh, now uh, registered is 35 million active uh, 35 million. member, but only 4.6 million is from the informal sector. The rest right. is from the formal sector. Right. That's the harsh reality, right, of how far yeah. we have to go. Yeah. Yeah, that's why uh, we try to boost the number with some program and ability to pay is the, the factor and also willingness to pay so that's why we try to encourage all members to see people around them and try to reach them and register them, register them as a member all in all i i i confess that gotong royong is important value to build a better future nationally or globally Yes. So that's our, our uh, view about the Ottoman values. I can see how it comes together in the sense that if we go back to the Arabic word of um, ahlak, of uh, kind of everyone taking agency and responsibility, and gotoroyong, of coming together and doing it, 
then there really, really isn't an excuse, right? Because we would all come together and make the difference together. So if I was to um, zoom out for a second, and Bapa Rudolph works a lot with the st has worked a lot with the State Department in the U.S. and is zooming in from the U.S. and I think he's been there since 4 a.m. It's now maybe 5:30 a.m. for him. Uh, Rudolph, thank you for joining us, Bapa Rudolph. And I love the fact that so he's so humble. He said, "Look, you've got a lot of people on your panel. The Vice Minister is there." Do you want me to just politely knock off? I'm committed, but shall I just politely knock off? Or shall I make it radically brief? Now, I think what Bapa Rudolph has to add <laughs> is really important. So I said, you can make it radically brief. You don't even have to make it that radically brief, but we'd love to have you, have you share, please, because I know you want to, you're going to zoom out and bring, the, bring a bigger perspective here. Thank you, Rudolph. I thank you. Thank you so much, Mandi, for that generous, that generous note. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks for thanks. asking. I, um, I cannot tell you all how much power is flowing through my screen. I'm actually not in the U.S. now. It's a bit of a change of plans. I'm in Riyadh. In Saudi oh, Arabia. yes, you're in Riyadh. And, Sorry. And, and um, no, not at all. I just, just to let you know that this conversation and this session from its beginning until this moment has just been utterly remarkable. I'd like to join Shiv and my fellow panelists in thanking the Indonesian government for, for first of all leading the G20 in this incredibly important and challenging year and for making space for the V20 engagement group which we very much think must and will be official soon and a timing couldn't be neither better nor more urgent. I'd also like to thank my colleagues and of course Dima and all of those who led to the creation of the V20 of which I feel privileged to be a part for making this happen. And I have to say that um, to the vice chairman, in all my exposure to the world of values, um, I, I rarely have I heard such a concrete, specific and practical articulation of what it means to apply values and practice, as you said, Your Excellency. So I thank you for that. And I thank you, Dima. Mandeep, one, one lens that I think is so crucial in the G20 context is policy. And as policy is a domain in which I do a lot of my work, Many people don't know what policy is. What is policy? And, and when you go to the definition of what policy is, you suddenly realize the importance of values. Because the policy is the official guiding principle or orientation of either a single nation state or a group of nation states on a given issue. It is a principle. It, is, it sets the parameters within which decisions are made. And if we think back on what the vice chairman says, we instantly see how policy is at its heart about values. But when those values are not made explicit, when the discussion of values is made unconscious or set to the side, then the design of policies becomes driven by other considerations that are much shallower. And by the way, Shiv, you, you gave me a brief touch of enlightenment, my dear brother, because when, when you read the Dunn poem, No Man is an Island, I had a thought that I've never thought of before, which is that below the surface of the shiny water, there are no islands. There are no islands, are there? And so if we also go to the great Arabic heritage of algebra, for example, I think that's key because the equations are our values. X equals many different things, but the structure of the equations, the structure of our values are unified. But in policy making, when the values are not made explicit, technocratic considerations, political considerations, shallower considerations come in. Whereas when the shared intent of a policy and the values that undergird it are made explicit, it creates a space in which people can come together and create the policies that we really need. So thanks for giving me the chance to offer those thoughts. Thank you, Shiv, for a moment of enlightenment this morning. And I pass it back to you, Mandeep. Thank you. Thank you, Bapa Rudolph. I have to say that when um, we have these like uh, founder calls, every single month we get together. So despite our work during the month, we then have this kind of powerful Zoom call. And I wish, Rudolph, you were sitting where Dima and I and the Vice Minister are sitting right now, because even as you look around the room, we have people from Riyadh and Jeddah. We have people from Italy. We have people from, literally, people have flown in from around the world, wearing their national dress, sporting their diversity and their unity. And to have almost like a, a global government or a state that you're talking about, Rudolph, is needed and that's what the G20 could become because it would influence all the other countries once the G20 gets that. So with the V20 being where it is, 
Vice Minister, I'd love you to close it off yeah. for, that, for us. Can I just go back to my slides just yes. quickly? Yeah. We're going to share Do a slide slides, onto yes. your screens. Yeah. So basically, uh, I paused at, a, uh, at my first comment about how to actually create a values that encompass the past, the now, and the future. The past, so the, present, and future. Yeah, past, present, and future. So that's yes. why we create this akhlaq. The first is amanah and competence. That's actually more on personal level, how to become both accountable, have a high integrity, but also competent to actually compete in the future with all these technological change. Yes. And then harmony and loyal is actually related to the social function. Because we have the harmony part is actually related both to society and to environment. Yes. So that's why one of the programs that we have right now, we want to push the women leadership instead of enterprise to reach 25% women leadership. Female leadership, Female leadership, 25%. In 2023, 20, 20, 20, yes. Yeah, soon so, 50 because we're 50% of the population, <laughs> but we'll start with 25. Staging, yes, staging. Yes, yes. So, so that's actually one of the part of the harmony. And what we mean by loyal is loyal to the country and to society. Yes. So that, that's like the more social dimension. But then for to adapt to the future of changes in technology, in, in innovation, then we create these two other uh, values, which is adaptive and collaborative. So that we create you know, people who are more adaptable to changes in technology, social, geopolitical changes, and also create an environment that create collaboration, not only between state and enterprise, but also with private sector, with, with the whole society. So this this yeah. is exactly where we started. It was looking at the word aklan yeah. and looking how it's made up and the six letters with yes. which it's made up. Yes. So your point is high integrity. Well, it, all of these are the Indonesian words or the Arabic words? That uh, so akhlaq is actually a very uh, high level uh, Arab word coming from, from Muslim. Yeah, uh, Ahlak, uh, integ yeah. like and amana supreme also, integrity. Yeah, amana. But then competent, harmonious, loyal, adaptive collaboration is more of a modern world. So if we, we combine between you know, our heritage, Pancasila, yes. with, the, with the, you know, more religious based values yes. and the more modern, sort of like forward looking values. Yes. So it's a bit of a mix of here and there, but this is how we try to answer the past, the present, and the future. So Aklan is a word that I struggled with at the beginning of this conversation, but I'll never struggle with again. And I implore all of you not to, to always have that with you. Because indeed, like you said, it's a combination of the narrative of the past, present and future. And it's what we need to equip ourselves, our children and our planet for the values-based future that we wish for. Thank you. Thank you, V20. And, and thank you for being a true representation of Akhlaq. We have witnessed this through every Indonesian that we have met uh, today and, and during this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for being here for the whole entire time because we were told you weren't able to. And your commitment and your integrity is true to its word. So thank you. Oh, Can sorry. we give a Before round of applause? Before people applause? disappear, we're going to have a quick uh, photograph. That's right. Yes. So... <laughs> Boleh kita berikan tepuk tangan, another round of applause for Patiko, Ibu Dima, Ibu Mandip. And then we'll have a photo session with uh, the speakers online too. In three, two, one, give the best smile everyone. Okay, photographers, all right. One more. One more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank for you your so time, much. Patiko, Ibu Dima, Ibu Mandip, lovely and beautiful women, beautiful females. Indeed, you, you, and beautiful topic. You will be corrected by Dr. Mandip. Females. <laughs> And for me, just sitting there, witnessing the dialogue, the opening of this dialogue is just very heartwarming and very, very inspiring. Thank okay, you. as the gentlemen are clearing the stage for us, we would like to inform the audience, if you needed an uh, interpreting service, you can actually have it online. So you go to our Zoom, there's a link there for you to hear the translation. 
accordingly. And for those of you in the audience who need the interpretation service, you have to use your own headphones. Yes. And connect to the link in the Zoom. Thank you. Shall we move to the center? Yes. Kinan? Okay. We have more interesting dialogues coming up. Yep. Like this next one, before the dialogues, there's a keynote remarks. Yep. So, honorable invites, member and committee of V20, ladies and gentlemen, to set the underlying tone and summarize the core message of event. Today, we will have three keynote remarks starting from the Minister for National Development Planning, Bapanas, Indonesia. So, let's welcome to the screen His Excellency Minister Dr. Honoris Causa Insinyur Haji Suharso Mono Arfa MA, whom will be represented by Bapak Sinaider CH Siahaan, Deputy Minister for Development Funding Affairs at the Ministry of National Development Planning, Bapenas, Indonesia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera, salam, om swastiastu, namo buddhaya, dan salam kebajikan. Uh, distinguished colleges, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. Uh, I would like to thank the Values 20 for the invitation to speak in the summit, representing <coughs> my minister. It is my utmost pleasure to be amongst all of you today. Uh, distinguished colleges, we convene here today during one of the world's most challenging periods. Almost three years since the COVID-19 pandemic started, we are still faced with multiple challenges resulting from its adverse, adverse effects. Across the world, our post-pandemic recovery efforts remain fragmented and inequitable, which further depends inequality between and within countries. This alarming situation has exacerbated the lingering development challenges that have existed before the pandemic started, yet were still left largely unresolved, including climate change, food and energy insecurity, global economic slowdown, political instability, and other disruptions faced by the international order. These challenges are hindering our efforts in realizing the sustainable development agenda, particularly that enshrined in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Referring to the initial deadline set in the 2030 Agenda, we only have less than eight years left to fully achieve the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. However, we are at the risk of not meeting such a deadline due to the slow pace of SDGs delivery. This unsatisfactory state of progress is further exacerbated by the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Something needs to be done to address these development challenges and put SDGs delivery back on track. In times like this, all eyes are on the G20. As a forum that accounts for the 20 biggest economies and 80% of the world's population, there are high expectations for the G20 to not only react, but also act and lead by example. One question remains, how should the G20 act to accelerate post-pandemic recovery and advance SDGs achievements amidst the diverging stance on various issues and the different interests between its members. Indeed, the actions of the G20 should be guided by value. As our colleagues from Values 20 have accurately pointed out throughout the year, the G20 has been consistent in building its discussions upon the values of stability, resilience, inclusion, and multilateralism. This year's G20 team of Recover Together, Recover Stronger, has captured all of those values, reaffirming our aspirations to recover stronger with long-term stability and resilience, reiterating the spirit of inclusiveness in recover together, 
with reintegrated multilateralism at its core. Such values are well articulated by development ministerial meeting. Throughout the year, these values have also been advanced, embedded, and streamlined in the development working group priority issues. By doing so, we could deliver our mandates of narrowing the development gap and fostering sustainable economic growth. Colleges, our work in DWG aims to contribute to the most pressing challenges in the recovery process by mainstreaming the sustainability lens. In particular, within the G20 roadmap for stronger recovery and resilience in developing countries, including LDCs and SIDs, we highlighted three key focus areas that embody all of these lenses, which I found very much related to V20's concept of sustainability compass that are nature, economy, well being, and society. First, to respond to the economic need, we focus on enhancing productivity, competitiveness, and resilience of the micro, small, and medium sized enterprises, upholding the values of inclusivity and interconnectedness. We promote and enhance financial inclusion, access to the global value chain, and the active participation of women. Second, to ensure the resilience and well-being of the society, we put forward the discussion on adaptive social protection. Here, we foster the value of inclusion of all people by helping the poor and other at-risk communities to prepare, cope with, and adapt future shocks. Third, to foster sustainable growth while protecting our nature, we promote green economy and blue economy where we try to nurture the values of environmental consciousness and social justice in conducting our economy by discussing just and inclusive transition. Furthermore, we realize that financing is a key enabler to achieve the SDGs. Therefore, this year we put forward the G20 principles to scale up blended finance, which is tailored to the perspective of the developing countries, LDCs, and SIDs. We have seen the sustainable finance markets are largely concentrated in advanced economies and only a limited number of developing countries. Through promoting blended finance, we aim to improve the trend by increasing the capacity of developing countries to become key players in the sustainability market. In doing so, we also aim to embody one of the consistently revered values in the G20 which is inclusion of the most marginalized. Another consistently revered values in the G20 that we are proud of championing is multilateralism, which serves as the main premise of our third priority issues. The fragmented and inequitable state of post-pandemic recovery effort indicates the insufficiency of our business as usual multilateralism. Under the Indonesian presidency, DWG has fostered discussions that resulted in positive notes on multilateralism, including discussions that reaffirmed global commitment in improving multilateralism by emphasizing its urgency and welcome efforts to reinvigorate multilateralism under the recalled commitments of the United Nations 75th Anniversary Declaration. In embodying such a value of multilateralism, we believe that Meet the diverging stances, PWG could unite G20 members in addressing development challenges together and fulfilling a sustainable world ahead. We also share the same vision with Value 20 on the prominent role of accountability. It enables us to monitor and reflect on the current progress of our work to better plan the way forward in achieving sustainable development, particularly SDGs in a timely manner. Therefore, DWG formulates the accountability document named 2022 G20 Bali Update to enshrine the contribution of Indonesian G20 presidency toward the SDGs achievements and report the progress of currently active G20 development commitments for the upcoming presidencies to build upon. Distinguished colleges, values help us make conscious decisions and planning in the areas where we want to make a difference. At the national level, 
Our conviction to reflect such values have been long embedded in our five pillars of values called Pancasila. As our compass in governing and humanities, Pancasila unpacked five core values that become the blueprint for our national development plan and policies, including the roadmap of SDGs. Pancasila places its conviction to promote justice for its people, and I believe the same beliefs are encompassed within the SDGs. People, peace, planet, prosperity, and partnerships all together are the North Star in achieving sustainable development, ensuring that the development does not forsake the future of our children for monetary gains. Across 17 goals and for over 169 SDG targets, we want to ensure that people have equal access to sustainable livelihood, eradicate poverty, and promote decent jobs and well being among others. These goals are consistent with the values we have put, orienting our development strategies to the people. Finally, I would like to congratulate the P20 for a very successful year and for their timely contributions in positioning values at the center of policy making across the finance and Sherpa track in the G20. I believe their insightful knowledge of values will improve the quality of our public policy, particularly in addressing global development challenges. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Terima kasih kepada Bapak Schneider C.H. Siahaan, Deputy Minister for Development, Funding Affairs at the Ministry of National Development, Planning Bapenas Indonesia. So, honorable invites, distinguished members and committee of the V20, ladies and gentlemen, the next keynote remarks will be delivered by the Indonesia G20 co Sherpa and also Deputy for International Economic Cooperation Coordination. Indonesia. Honorable Dr. Edi Priyo Pambudi, that will be represented by Bapak Ferry Ardianto, the Deputy Multilateral Sus Sherpa G20 Assistant. Please welcome to the screen Bapak Ferry Ardianto. Uh. Hello, Paferi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? How are you doing? Great, everything is great here. All right, we've been waiting for you. Now the stage is yours. Thank you, guys. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon to you all. Excellency, Pa Schneider uh, Siahaan, uh, Deputy for uh, Development Funding, Ministry for National Development Planning of Indonesia, Pa Makarinus Libisono. Ibu Alisa Wahid, Ibu BG Malon, and Pak Yuri Yogaswara of the Value 20 Indonesia, dan Pak Asyad Rasid, Chairman of Kadin uh, or Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first, allow me to extend my sincere appreciation to all notable speakers, moderators, participants, and all parties involved for organizing this uh, value 20 summit with the theme of value values at the center as the notion suggests i also value the human center policy recommendation provided by the discussion within the value 20 framework as you all know that uh, over the past two years uh, the world has seen one unprecedented occurrence after another with impacts a humongous to the extent that the world has never seen before. Pandemic is not over yet, but now we are also facing increasing and compounding risks, uh, which are high inflation, weak growth, energy and food insecurity, climate risk, and uh, geopolitical fragmentation. As these uh, global challenges have exposed the global system of its flaws and Vulnerabilities. The most important lesson learned is that no one is safe until everyone is amidst this interconnected world. Thus, we all have a shared responsibility to protect our world. 
with the theme of recover together, recover stronger, Indonesia G20 uh, presidency emphasizes the value of inclusiveness and collaboration, reflecting the Indonesian value of Gotong Royong. We can achieve more by working together. Aware of these different backgrounds, cultures, and circumstances among G20 countries, Indonesia G20 presidency inspired by the Indonesia philosophical spirit, Ineka Tunggal Ika. I mean that different level of development among the G20 members should not divide us. Instead, it should unite us. Therefore, the global conducive environment and partnership values are becoming more important than ever. While the current global condition is plagued with uncertainties, it is imperative to not lose sight of these values in tackling global challenges to leave no one behind. I took a note from the uh, Value 20 communique on the values of the G20 as an institution by identifying the value expressed through the G20 declaration year on year, which are stability resilience, inclusion, and multilateralism. Based on the value 20 analysis, the values broke up by the G20 from 2008 until last year, through the lens of the SDGs reflected the dominance of commitment to achieve SDG number eight, which I believe is vision work and economic growth. However, Indonesia as the presidency aims at taking action beyond and equally for all goals. So, so we are gonna uh, be bringing the deep rooted concept of Trihita Karana, which is uh, loosely translated to three ways of uh, happiness that get us on creating harmony among human, nature, and creation as the base for implementing sustainable uh, goals. The lens of sustainable compass mode used by the uh, value 20 in addressing its four perspectives, which are nature, economy, uh, well-being, and society certainly bring a fresh perspective in mitigating global challenges. Values help us develop and set up our future. Additionally, our choices are a reflection of our values, belief, and goal for living a happy life. As a result, when values are shared, a group internal consciousness and level of interconnection are strengthened. Therefore, when a value is shared, a common goal is set. I thank you. Terima kasih. Wal beli tafik wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Honorable Dr. Edi Priyo Pambudi, SAMA, the Indonesia G20 Co-Sherpa and also Deputy for International Economic Cooperation, Coordination of Indonesia, that was represented by Bapak Ferry Ardianto, the Deputy Multilateral Su Sherpa G20 Assistant. Yes, thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, let us still focus on the screen for the last but not least keynote remarks that will be delivered by the Chairman of Indonesia Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Indonesia. Please welcome Bapak Arshad Rashid. Yes, but before we welcome Bapak Arshad Kinan, we would like to invite all of you, the audience, the participants of V20 Summit who are still outside, to gather again at the ARC because after Bapak Arshad, we are going to see something special. A True. very special performance which has been prepared for the audience of V20 Summit, being here in Bali or also virtually all over the, all world. Over the world. Okay? Yes. So are we ready? Yes. For continuing, let's continue to the next keynote speaker. Let's welcome to the screen, Bapak Arshad Rashid.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Honorable guests and excellencies. Yang kami hormati Bapak Suharso Mono Arfa, Minister for National Development Planning or Bapenas. Yang kami hormati Bapak Kartika Wirjo Admojo, Deputy Minister of State Owned Enterprises. Yang kami hormati Bapak Dr. Iwan Syahrio, Director General for the Minister of Education and Culture and also Chair of the Education Working Group 2022. Yang kami hormati Ibu Dr. Vivi Yulaswati, Special Staff to the National Development Planning Ministry and Head of Indonesia SDG Secretariat. Yang kami hormati Bapak Edi Priyopam Budi, Indonesia G20 Co-Sherpa and Deputy for International Partnership, Coordinating Minister for Economic Affairs. Yang kami hormati Bapak Profesor Bambang Brojonegoro, uh, the lead chair to T20 2022 Indonesia. Yang kami hormati Ms. Dima Alsheh and Dr. Gazi Binzar, V20 founders. Yang kami hormati Ibu Alisa Wahid, V20 2022 co-sherpa. Yang kami hormati Bapak Profesor Makarin Bibisono, V20 2022 co-sherpa and also Ibu Meiki Malawan, V20 2022 co-chairs. And also, uh, your, yang kami hormati Bapak Yuri Yogaswara, the V20 2022 co-chairs, and distinguished participants, guests of these forums, and member of the V20 founding circle. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is truly a great honor for me to speak on behalf of Kadin Indonesia or the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the sole organization mandated by law to represent the business community in Indonesia. I would like to welcome the presence of governments, organizations, delegations and thought leaders that are joining us today. We gathered here today in the Values 20 2022 summit in which the V20 team will showcase value-based policy recommendation which is aimed to overcome global challenges and improve people's life around the world. Question is what is value? Values are what move us, our core, our guiding principles of how we act and behave. It is more important now than ever to rely on and keep our values in check to address current global challenges. It's been two years since the pandemic began. Even though the Indonesian economy is recovering and growing at 5.4% in the second quarter of this year, we still need to remain vigilant as we are currently experiencing a fundamental shift in the global economy as volatility, uncertainty, and climate crisis continue to worsen. To prepare for these challenges, Indonesia's G20 presidency has come up with three priority issues to address, namely, first, global health architectures, second, digital transformation, and third, sustainable energy transition. And to realize this aspiration inclusively, we need to instill values for a just transition to take place. Three key values which I always live by and instill into my organization that I led. Agility, inclusive, collaborative, impact driven. First, agility. At its core, agility refers to an organization ability to respond to change, to adapt and transform accordingly, and the ability to turn turbulence into game-changing opportunities. Examples of agilities are include micro, small, medium enterprises adoptions of digital technology during the height of the pandemic for their survival. This is in line with the priority of the G20 presidency of digital transformation. Not only businesses, but the public sectors must also be agile and responsive in times of crisis. The Indonesian government has shown this value by reallocating gasoline subsidies which have been misallocated for years. The subsidy took a quarter of the 2022 state budget 
At first, it was directed to help the low-income demography. But in reality, its recipient was mostly those who were affluent and able to afford cars. By reallocating the budget to targeted cash assistance for low-income families, the use of the state budget is more justified in alleviating poverty and stimulating the grassroots economy at the same time. Second, inclusive collaboration, or in Indonesia, we know it as Gotong Royong. Collaborative efforts are needed to tackle global challenges, as the responsibility lies not only on the government, but also on everyone, including businesses. This collaborative action can be realized through the public-private partnership model, which is a collaboration between the regulators and the private sectors. This model of collaboration is needed in developing the renewable energy sectors. For instance, innovative financing such as blended finance mechanism and joint efforts in mobilizing investment. Kadin and our members has embraced this value by launching the inclusive closed loop partnership, assisting uh, micro, small, medium enterprises through knowledge and technological buildings on best practices, access to financing and markets, as well as ensuring of takers. Through the partnership, we kick off this program by assisting horticultural farmers in Garut, West Java. And the program was proven to be a big success as we successfully increased their yield by 12 to 15 percent. Increase the farmer's profit margin by 27 percent, or about 120 million rupiah per hectare of land. In the grand scheme of things, we want to spread this program to farmers throughout Indonesia, empowering farmers while maintaining the nation's food security. Third, impact driven towards sustainable goals. Modern organizations are not merely profit oriented, but are responsible for creating positive impacts for the public. For example, right healing applications like Gojek, besides streamlining and uh, digitizing the transport industry, it also created 2 million new jobs. To multiply this social impact, we also need to support the good work of social enterprises that could tackle social economic problems on sustainability. Organizations also have a responsibility toward the environment especially in the fight against global warming and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Kadin is assisting its network of companies to transition to renewable energies through several programs such as Kadin Net Zero Hub, serving as a networking facilitator, mapping and connecting companies in Indonesia to the right potential ecosystem partner, including financiers and investors to enable net zero transformation. Also, sustainability awards by Kadin, working together with Eurocamp, a recognition for businesses and individuals who are exemplary in demonstrating their sustainability practices, especially in the field of women empowerment, water sanitation, and plastic recycling. In the near future, we are also going to launch the ESG Coalition with the Ministry of Investment and Ministries of cooperative and MSMEs to support the private sectors in implementing ESG. Through implementing those four values, we at Kadin are convinced that the world would be able to tackle global challenges, realize the three priorities of G20, and expedite economic recovery. Recover together, recover stronger. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bapak Arshad. So after this, we will continue our agenda with the second session of Value Steering Committee panel discussion. As for now, we will have 10 minutes mini break. So for those of you who haven't got your lunch yet, you can have it or maybe just need to go to the toilet, uh, but please return to this area at 1.40 p.m. What time is it now? I lost track of time. Okay, 1.40 p.m. is good, okay? 15 yes. minutes, yeah. Meanwhile, we here will enjoy the Green School Cultural Performance of Cool Cool Dance. And also, not yet, not yet. <laughs> 
for those of you who wants to wander outside, you can enjoy our sponsors partners booth at the heart of school area from Kalbe Pharma, which is the largest healthcare provider in Indonesia, who showcase some of their products today on their booth, such as Fitbar, Hydrococo, some supplement, Sakatonic, and they're also free medical checkups. And also Paragon Technology and Innovation, which have ma many famous cosmetic brands in Indonesia that provide natural purity with a halal, modern, and reliable process, such as Warda, Amina, and many more. And also one of my favorite, Bye Bye Plastic Bag and Utopia, they provide a curated sustainable fashion product. And bo booth of V20 collaboration project with Jumbo, where you can have the special edition of V20 merch and essential oils. And also Indica booth, where they provide information about their sustainability mining project. And please allow us to thank our partners and sponsors one more time before we continue because they have supported our journey until today to the this Gotong summit. Royong partners. Yes, and they are Indica Energy, Bank Mandiri, Mine ID, Paragon Technology and Innovation, Al Turki Holding, Bank Republic Indonesia, Forum Human Capital Indonesia. Kalbe Pharma, Hydrococo, Fitbar, Saka Pharma, Click Doctor. Patra Jasa, BP Jam Sostek, Taspen, Jenara Art, Garuda Indonesia, Kementerian Pendidikan, Riset dan Kebudayaan dan Teknologi, Alam Sutra Realty, Kereta Api Indonesia, and Kala Group. Also our organizing partners, Daya Lima, Daya Dimensi Indonesia, Bapenas, Stoik Trisula, dan Pantare Communication. And also our community partners, Pemimpin.id, Lead the Fast 2022, Ecosystem, Jumbo, dan Saya Perempuan Anti Korupsi. Last but not least, Arwat Group, Evolutionary Futures Lab, The Leadership Tree, Axia Origin as our knowledge partners. So now, let us enjoy the Kulkul cool cool Cultural Dance Performance, a little bit about Kulkul. Cool cool. It is a bamboo ensemble that used as a communication tool by the Balinese people to announce an important message to the society and also symbolize important value in religion and social life, which in harmony and gotong royong. We are very, very excited to see the richness of Balinese culture. So without further ado, please welcome Green School, Green School Cool Cool Dance Cultural Performance.
Can we give them another round of applause for the Green School Cultural Performance? So beautiful, Suksma, Bapak dan Ibu for the beautiful music as well. Terima kasih banyak membuat hari kita semakin cerah dan penuh dengan energi baik. Yes, so it's magical to see this performance, Suksma. I would love to be able to play you or can. dance a Balinese dance. You can learn. <laughs> it's never too late to learn, right? Indeed. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Our summit, ladies and gentlemen.